So today we're going to talk about how we can clean up a chemical reaction, how we can draw some organometallic complexes, specifically the octahedral geometry, and how to make nice circular catalytic cycles. Uh, we are not going to talk about how to use the fundamentals uh, for using ChemDraw. Uh, that's something that you will experience when you take organic chemistry. These are specifically things that are maybe a little bit more hidden away, and someone has to tell you. Uh, in order to find. I know that I had to be told where to find these things when I was learning how to use ChemDraw. So first things first, whenever you use ChemDraw, it's standard practice to apply a document style um, or document settings. These can be found in File. You go down to Apply Document Settings From, and we always want to use ACS Document 1996. Uh, it's pretty standard, uh, standard agreed upon usage. Uh, is to use this document style. It changes the line widths, so it makes everything a little bit easier to read, as well as to import into and out of Word, and we will be using the ACS template in Word, so these figures are meant to fit in that template. All right, so I've already set the document settings for 1996 for this guide. Now the first one, this is a, this is a, a really important feature because this is something you can do by hand, and it's not uh, the most intuitive thing. So it can be, it, ChemDraw has a number of these tools that are built in that you might have to hunt to find. So the first one is how we can clean up a chemical reaction. So here we have a simple oxidation written up, a hypothetical reaction, and we, it doesn't look very good. Things aren't aligned, things aren't spaced out very well. So to clean up a chemical reaction, we can highlight and start collect everything. Um, we can see here that everything's selected, starting materials, my arrow, my reagents, my product, then what we do is we go up here to Structure and the drop-down menu. We can go down to Clean Up Reaction. And when I click this button, it will automatically adjust and uh, distribute my, my figure to make it look a little bit cleaner so I, can, so I can actually publish it. So if I hit Clean Up Reaction, we'll be able to follow what happens to my structures. I can see that it um, aligned my compounds over the arrow, it shrunk the arrow to fit the length of the reagents, and it also aligned my starting material and my product. So now, this is good to go. A handy thing if we're gonna manipulate a reaction after you clean it up, if you double click the arrow of the reaction, it'll select the entire scheme, right? So if I just double click that, now I can move that around, manipulate it, whatever I need to do, or I can copy it over. Uh, so if you have dense figures, sometimes this can be a handy way of selecting just something specific. Next is how we can draw a nice octahedral complex. So with inorganic chemistry, our coordination numbers start to expand. We have much larger compounds that we're worried about. And the octahedral geometry is one that we will use quite often. Uh, and the standard stamp that ChemDraw uses you can find here if you go um, to the stamps and down to stereo centers, um, we can see that there is an octahedral shape. Now, however, when you select that stamp, it's really small, and if you try to actually add things on these labels, uh, it gets too crowded. So if we're gonna try to make one of these complexes, there's actually a, a nice little shortcut we can use, and that is actually using this type of a molecule. Um, so one of these kind of cyclic molecules gives us a good framework for making these octahedral complexes. So how this works is if we set this up, I'm going to use some hotkeys here just to make this go a little bit faster. Again, if you want to learn um, a little bit more about the hotkeys and just how to use ChemDraw basics and fundamentals, there's lots of guides online. Um, so I'm not going to dig into that too much. So once we have this shape, you might be wondering, well, how do you make this into an octahedron? All these points that are connected inward, we need to connect to a single bonding site, right? So we can drag our lines here, um, and we're gonna make all of these bonds on the inner, uh, inside of this ring shape. So once I have this, now I can go ahead and just select the center and drag it to the middle. Now, once it's cleaned up, now in the middle, I can put a label for a metal. Let's say we're gonna make an iron complex. And now, ChemDraw put my label in the wrong spot. And now I have 
my iron in the middle, and now I can go ahead and delete the bonds that are connecting the structure, right? If I wanna make this a bipyridyl system, I can add in my nitrogens. If I wanna make sure that I'm showing my geometry, I can add in my dashes and my wedges to make sure that these are pointed in the right direction. I can convey that nice three-dimensional shape and now I have a nice octahedral geometry. And this can be used just to get any of the appropriate spacing for the octahedron. You could delete entirely delete the aromatic rings if you want. Lastly, what we want to look at is how to make a nice circular catalytic cycle in ChemDraw. And this is something that's not immediately apparent. If we have our, our cycle and we want to show maybe an oxidation and a substitution and potentially even another reduction, you might think that there's an arrow for everything you need. We select one of these arrows, we try to draw this out, we see very quickly that it's not quite a, a nice circle, right? ChemDraw doesn't have the angles quite right on this. And so we're actually not going to use those arrows in order to make a circle. What we are going to use is just a circle. So in the shape tool, you can select a circle here. We're going to make this shape and we're going to see how this works in a second. So once I have my circle, I want to put my compounds on the circle where I want them to be. All right, so this is where they're going to fall. I'm going to select the straight arrow. And as long as I'm selecting one point on the circle to another, I can do this. When I hover over the middle anchor point, it actually allows me to bend that line. And so I can bend it to fit better fit the circle. And now I can even grab the head of the circle and extend it and move it along the line. All right, I can do this for all of these different steps of the reaction. And bend it out and now the last thing I do is I just delete that circle shape from underneath All right so now I can move my reagents in place now I have a much smoother uh, catalytic cycle uh, that is actually aligned to look more like a circle and it doesn't rely on using chem draws uh, bent arrows so those are just three little tips that uh, someone had to teach me when using ChemDraw, and now you can use for making your lab reports for inorganic chemistry. If you find any additional tips or any fun shortcuts or handy things uh, that you think would be helpful for the future for inorganic, be sure to let me know and I can either add them to this video or make a new video uh, to prepare students in the future. Another thing is if you like finding out some of these shortcuts or hotkeys, you can always follow ChemDraw on Facebook and Twitter. That's pretty much what their account does is they just post interesting videos uh, relating to, you know, shortcuts in Chemist to ChemDraw or things you didn't know you could do. All right, I will see you in class. I look forward to seeing your high quality professional figures.